Hi there, we're here with Barry Mowat and he is the artistic director with the Vancouver Biennale and Barry, here we are down at False Creek at, um, just on the edge of a very exciting project that's being put up, Jonathan uh, Borowski. Tell me a little bit about what's going on. Uh, Jonathan is uh, the second uh, of 20 major installations that will happen for the Biennale uh, in the four cities in which we're involved in, North Vancouver, uh, Squamish and New Westminster and Vancouver of course. And so. Uh, what the Biennale is all about is, art, is the open air museum, art and public spaces, and so this is really here to animate uh, this pretty um, non non engaging space. Uh, so that as people walk the seawall here at the uh, edge of Olympic Village uh, throughout the year, and the colors of the work sort of hopefully embrace people to come forward and sort of play and be a part of them. So we really see uh, this particular piece being what we want most of the Biennale pieces to be, much like the amazing laughter, mm -hmm. you know, the, oh, yeah. the one everyone knows mm -hmm. and has come to love. Uh, we hope that this on this side of town will become one of those uh, inspiring kind of works that people will spend time at and take the, get the photograph taken, capture the Vancouver skyline. How important is this, is this sort of thing, the public art, for the city now at this point? I think it's still pretty crucial. Uh, I I'd like to think that we really inspired uh, the city and the arts and cultural group to uh, look at large-scale public art in a completely different way than they were 10 years ago. Um, I think it's as the amazing laughter and Dennis often having engagement rings and the Grand June's large floaty um, frozen water. Uh, as those works have appeared throughout throughout the uh, metro area, they've really sort of really come to identify the city. And we talk, we call ourselves a world class city, but every world class city has great public art. And Vancouver's public art historically has been the mountains and the water. You know? And so now we have all these sky rises around us and we're becoming a very urban city. So it becomes that much more important that the art that we uh, create and the interventions that we do, which are not always high-rise interventions, but really, as you'll see in this finale, go into the city and from the street to neon to other forms. But it's really about helping to arrest people's, people's movements as they're moving through the city. So Jonathan, um, talking about placing something somewhere, why this piece, why here? Uh, well, the process is that the Biennale approaches me and they say, uh, we'd love for you to come visit and maybe we can pick out a site where you can place one of your works. And that's Barry Mowat, who uh, is the head of this whole uh, Biennale operation. And so I visited here and we visited different sites. This happened to be the first site. And as soon as I saw it, I thought, well, <laughs> this, is, this is beautiful. I think we can do something nice here. And so that's how it began. And then I sent them a model of a human structure sculpture, uh, exact model of this one here. And uh, we agreed to proceed with that and to, uh, I suggested, a round concrete base to make it kind of elegant and three-dimensional. And so there is a theme to this Biennale about humanity, all kinds of humanity coming together. So naturally, the theme of this piece, Human Structures, is quite obvious. It's humanity connecting itself together. I like to say humanity building its world, human beings building their own world. This is what we're doing. Even this little process of cameraman, interviewer, artist, as a threesome, we create a structure, creates information, which we put out to a larger audience, and we teach each other. So it's, it's always structure. So this is a sort of a, a symbol, a metaphor, if you will, for uh, human beings uh, connecting together to build our world. Are people getting it more? Are you moving away? Do you feel the mm. need to remind people more mm. about? I mean, looking at this piece, this is very much connectedness. Mm. Well, we're all the same. We see the news at night if we turn on the television, and it's not the happy news that we see about connectedness. We see the news of disconnectedness, and we see it at its worst. Mm -hmm. And we've been seeing it maybe our whole lives. It just seems a little worse maybe right now because it's in so many places simultaneously, Middle East whatever it's just so at one level you have that kind of coming at us and yet here we are in this idyllic setting here in Vancouver by the water and by beautiful air so our life always seems to be filled with this duality of, of there seems to be a lot of struggle for peace in the world and at the same time um, we have to find our own inner peace to, to make that happen and uh, all I can do is uh, try to reflect my own search for inner peace and, connect and, and, and put it out there and hope that it, it helps.